Thank you, Jesus. Paradise Now Church, here we are. 16th of the 4th, 2023. Another time of blessing. Another time to drink and receive. And, uh, if we doubt, we go without. So we have to believe. And then we, we open the door then in our heart to receive. But if we don't believe, we'll never be able to receive, will we? What's going on around us? Just before we move on, um, I was only talking to Brother Blade this morning about being called and people going and learning, you know, a calling, so to speak. Yeah. Well, the Lord calls, you know, when you read the scriptures, it's all called. He called Matthew, he called you, he called, called, called. He didn't say he studied them. He didn't say he college them. He didn't recommend them to go to a certain Bible college. He called them and they heard his voice. Right? And that, that's the assurance we have. That's the assurance I have for the last 36 years, is I hear his voice. I know my sheep. My sheep know my voice. They hear me. They follow me. They do what I say. And I have something to give them. And it's eternal life. Something that's far beyond money, friends, majority, wife, Husband, children, it's far, far beyond. Eternal life, it, it just smashes any earthly blessing out of the water. It just blows it clean out. You know, it's in a, beyond the atomic bomb. So we're so blessed that uh, we can line it up and we can check. You've got eternal life and then you go over to the left there and you see what it lines up with. And you've got a big list of stuff there. Hey? And the heading is eternal life. And you have a look at all the list, all the scriptures that we can check with our hearts. As Paul said to the Corinthians, you need to run a check on yourself to see if you're still in the phone. Because if you're not in the phone, where are you? You're out of the faith. And you're out of the house of God. Hey? You're out of touch now, baby. So we need to be in touch. Hey? Not like that fellow Stanley. What's his name? He used to have that program, In Touch Ministries. In touch with what? He proclaimed, once saved, always so. Charles Stanley. Lovely little Baptist. Lovely little religious people. Hey? He missed a minister in, uh, in Las Vegas, not on the strength. He'd have the big auditoriums and they paid big dollars for his books. Just another peddler of the word. It's disgusting that someone would supposedly get something from God free and then they go and hock it. To their supposedly brothers and sisters. <laughs> oh. We love you. But let me hop this book to you. It's all about divorce. And when you read it, you're going to feel so much better. But if you don't give me the money, you don't get it. That's how it works. Barcodes and price tags. Paul distanced himself from such people who peddle the word. He said, I've got nothing to do with them. Okay. 
126, 126 stolen cars in one month in Townsville, in the great south land of the Holy Ghost. 126 in one month, youth crime. 2023, the year of misery for the car owners. I mean, even if they were insured, all the drama you've got to go through and the paperwork and checking this and checking that. And in the process of uh, providing your identity and everything, someone might just slip in the side there on the side of the line and get it all. Next minute, oh, I've got a $5,000 bill. What's wrong? Oh, someone just bought something in your name. I never bought it. I don't even buy two fond beds. Yeah, someone bought it in your name because they got your information. Misery, 2023, the year of misery. And we see the rental scene, we see the houses, we see the builders, we see everything. Misery. Never seen it. Have you ever seen it like this? No. Families in, living in parks, in cars. They're paying $700 for a one room study. You know? And the good news is it's only going to get worse. Oh, I love it. But praise God, we're not in his economy. Eh? We're in the Lord's economy. Eh? We've got our hand in the hand of the man. It's still the water. Raging sea. He, he didn't jump up and down and say, oongie, boongie, woongie, and have all these things going on, crosses. And... He just said, be still. That's all he said to the water. I don't know anyone that can do that. If you can show me some man or woman in, in, in town or the world that can say to raging sea, be still. Okay. I'll follow them. But I know one that can do that. It wasn't Buddha. It wasn't that uh, tongue-kissing uh, devil lama. I mean, Delhi. Dalai Lama had the eight-year-old boy. He was kissing the eight-year-old boy in public. He told him, kiss on lip, kiss on lip, kiss me, kiss me on lip in public. And then he kissed him on the lips and he said, now, uh, tanke, tanke. That was tongue kiss. Told the eight-year-old boy to tongue kiss him <laughs> in public. <laughs> it's all over the news. Look, come on. They're, they're as holy as Swiss cheese. The whole lot of them. You know what I mean? The holy deli. Oh, look, I'm going to ride my llama from Peru to Texarkana. I'm going to ride him good in my own neighborhood. I'd like to take a walk, but not around the block. Yeah, the deli llama. The, the happy man. If that's what he does in public, what's he doing behind closed doors? He's tongue kissing eight year old boys in public. Tongue it! Tongue it! And the, uh, the boy standing there, it's on a video on the internet. If he's doing that in front of everyone, oh, look, someone give me a bucket. I'm going to vomit. Hey? Right? They should take him along for pedophilia. Oh no, he's the Delhi. Huh? He's got a deli in Lama. That's the way it goes, isn't it, these days? The world is full of evil. They violate the instructions of the Lamb. You've got authorities pleading. The authorities, I mean, it's unheard of. Authorities, authorities are pleading with the youth, with school children, to stop the violence in schools. Oh, look. Just send a half a dozen blokes in with the nunchucks and just sort it out there and then. <laughs> and just, just call them out. So you, look, you want it in the principal's office. <laughs> you know? And go and tell your parents and let them come down and get a serve too. Hey? It, it's, it's just beyond description. Pleading, pleading with the devil and the devil's children to stop the violence. Oh, 
Tzana Hurdle. No disciplinary uh, measures at home, at school, or in the public. No disciplinary um, measures laid down. No, no standard, see? If there's no standard, what can you live by? It, everything just turns pear-shaped, doesn't it? And the best standard we can have is the doctrine of Jesus because Jesus never went about bashing and terrorising people, you know? That wasn't Jesus' way. Actually, he said, turn the other cheek. Right? But he did say in Romans uh, 13, 1 to 7, he said, if, if you're going against the authorities, you've got a good reason to be frightened. You've got a good reason to fear. Because the authorities are given by God. And those rebel children, they're working against God. What can they expect? Chocolates and roses? God's going to deal with them. And it won't be good. The end won't be good. Hey? 23 year old bank worker in, in, down in Louisville in the United States 23 years of age and they were going to fire him he, uh, from his job at the bank he got his back up and just grabbed his uh, <laughs> semi-automatic rifle and just filled her up with rounds and went down to the bank and said, look, we'll just have to sort this out now. And he blew six people away. Four of them were colleagues, the other two were cops. This is 2023, the year of misery. Hey? This is the world we live in. Hey? Dear, oh dear. And then down the road in Louisville, the next day, someone uh, had a weapon and just blew away another person and wounded one other in the same area of Louisville. So, violence is the key. No, violence is not the key. Repentance is the key. Repentance. If You imagine if everyone in the world, every man and every woman repented of their sin, repented and came to Jesus and started doing things Jesus' way. Not the Dalai, La Dalai Lama's way, not the Pope's way, not some concocted religion's way, but just what Jesus says. And you see what happens. Well, I'll tell you what, it'll be just blessing upon blessing. It'll be a foretaste of glory. <laughs> if everyone decided Donald Trump, his former, apparently Donald Trump's former uh, fixer, they called him the fixer, Donald's fixer, he said, he gave a report on Donald Trump and he was very close to Donald Trump because anything went wrong, he'd fix it for him. He'd sort it out. And he said, he said, Donald Trump is all about money and power. End of story. He's not about Jesus. He's not about the truth. He's not about honesty. He's not about humility. He's about money and power. That's, he don't care about anything else. Or anyone else, right? as this, as his fixer, his one-time fixer said, it's all about him. And yet the evangelicals uh, go along with him. Even his family, uh, the fixer, uh, Donald Trump's fixer said, even his family uh, are liars and fraudulent, and they. They're forever talking up Donald Trump's uh, assets, saying he's got this, he's got that, he's got this much money and that much money, and he hasn't got it. Okay. So now where this sort of stuff lies, all the lies and, and, and fraudulent activity and, and all the sleaze, 
you, you can't go anywhere with that. You, you, you can't afford to associate with that. And the evangelicals can't see that because they're blinded by what they want too. See? The churches in the world today, they, they're into being someone. They're, they're into building, you know. They're into, as they say, uh, growing their church. No, you're just growing garbage. You're not growing. Well, actually, you are growing your church. It's not Jesus. Jesus said that he will build his church. He will. He will build it with his materials and his way. And it's not a visible way. You show me the New Testament so, and point to it and say, look, there's Jesus' church over there that he built. You can't find any. All you find in Jerusalem and Israel are man-made, man-made synagogues unto religion. And people who reject and despise Jesus as Messiah. That's all you got there. In a city that's intoxicated with homosexuality and the love of money and religious lies. Just reek of it. But yet, it's supposed to be the holy city. It's sort of like the holy Dalai Lama, isn't it? The holy tongue kisser. Holy pedo. They make me laugh. You know what I mean? The Lord was right as usual when he said to me, I would have a church bigger than Billy Graham, a ministry bigger than Billy Graham. And I do have. I have a ministry bigger than Billy Graham in the eyes of God because it's not full of lies and deceit. And it's not pumped up with money. And it's got no connection with the Roman Catholic filthy business. And it's got no connection with compromises and the lukewarm and peddlers of the word. That's what the Lord meant when he said to me 35 years ago, you, you have a ministry bigger. Napoleon Bonaparte was not a big man in height but he was a big man in heart. Undefeated on the battlefield. It's got nothing to do with height or size. It's what's in here. It's what's in the heart. Right? It's the fight and the dog, not the dog and the fight. Right? So there you go. Ten calls every day. The police get ten calls every day, every day, about violent children at schools in Sydney. Every day, ten calls. <laughs> violent children. Eh? They spare the rod and you'll spoil the child. The die is cast at home. Simple as that. Eh? One woman is uh, considered uh, murdered. She'd be about 50, I think, 60. And uh, she's been missing and they assume she's murdered and been buried in the rubbish dump. They must have put her in a bin and took her to the rubbish dump. I hope she hasn't taken my spot. <laughs> Some got it, some didn't. Because I said, when I die, it doesn't matter. My body, it doesn't matter. Put it in the tip. Put it in the bin. What's it matter? Right? That's all just more soupy, emotional waste. With everyone in their tears and, and their new dresses and shoes. For the funeral. They never bothered with you for 50 years. And they go there and put their little show on. 
Hey? It's best to just go quietly. Just move on, you know. Oh, I wonder if the world will remember me. I hope not. I hope not. Because I won't remember them when they're in hell and I'm in heaven. And I say, oh, do you know them? No, I don't know them. <laughs> Got no idea who are they. Because they did not listen when the Lord called. Zachariah. Hey? Zachariah. They did not listen. And then when they cried out, the Lord said, I'm not going to listen to you. We need to remember that. Yes. Michael Jordan, if you've got a, f a, a few spare dollars, you can have a pair of Michael Jordan sneakers. You can have his sweaty runners. Right? The old stinky runners for Michael Jordan. If you've got a spare 3.3 .3 million, I mean, that's dumb and dumber. 3.3 .3 million for a pair of used uh, runners with VO. Don't think so. Hey? <laughs> Let's move into the message today. We're going to be reading today. We're going on in our, our series, uh, The Gap, and this is our uh, 31st part of The Gap, and it's our sixth, our sixth part of stability because we're working out of the S in promises, G-A-P, promises. We promised God certain things and he promised us certain things. He promised that if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. But he also promised that if you don't continue on in his goodness, he'll cut you off. Because if you cut the natural branches off, uh, why would he not cut off the, uh, the wild that have been grafted in? And so uh, we're looking at recently, in the last five parts, this is our sixth part of stability. Of the great stability we have uh, in Jesus. Not just a friend and not just a, 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 a saviour and not just a, a um, redeemer and a deliverer and not just a brother, not just a family member, uh, a member of, of the family of father, not just... But stability that you can't get with money. You see, money it, it can't money can't help your mental uh, position at the end of the day. And we're all born sinners, and and with deteriorate, deteriorated uh, minds. From the day we're born, our mind deteriorates, day by day. And what's heightened that is sin. And that's why you've got so many people, they're so worried. They're just worried, sick, about tomorrow and, and rent and housing and jobs. And, whereas if they knew the Lord, they'd be able to roll that onto him. They'd be able to give it to him. Amen. Right? The Lord tells us to, to come to him in 
Matthew 11, 28, I think it is. Ye who labour and are heavily laden. And, and the things of this world are heavy, aren't they? But he ain't heavy. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. Right? The road, the road is long with many a winding turn. There's lots of changes. I was going down a winding road yesterday on a run with the sons of the Southern Cross and a few other clubs, you know. And we were hooking it down there, about 140 of us, 130. And it was just, you know, lots of turns and, and bends and ups and downs. But you know, the Lord kept me through it all. And, and one time there was a, a crisis uh, break right up the front. I, I wasn't far from the front, but still, they were gassing it. And, and it was a sudden uh, break, but it was even more sudden for the guy in front of me. And he braked really quick, you know. And I had really, because riding in pairs in the same lane, and I didn't have a lot of space to go either way. You can reach out and touch the guy next to you, basically. And I'm looking for my gap, you know. But the Lord showed me a little gap where I could just put my front wheel and just... And one other guy, he's a, he's a bit of a furious rider, he locked it up on a bend, about 120k, and he was just burning rubber. His back brake was just locked up and he was just sailing sideways around that bend. But he still hung in there. Because there was someone on the ship, you know, <laughs> that, that knew the Lord. When there's someone on the ship that knows the Lord, it'll be sweet. They don't realise that. You let that preacher come along for the run. You know, it might save our hide. Lonely. <laughs> so there's great stability. There's great stability in the Lord. Great promise. Because the Lord promised us. That he'd look after us, didn't he? So we'll have a look at uh, <coughs> our original text. We go on to Psalm 23, the stability psalm. Eh? The stability psalm. He ain't heavy. He's my, he's my bro brother. Whew. We're doing Psalm 23, uh, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David speaking, verse 6. Last week we've done verse 5, and I'm going to just drag the bottom of that 5. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. I'll just bring that in on to 6. Yeah? And uh, we just look at that anoint, the, that anointing. We had a bit of a look at it, but Father just gave me a little bit more. And uh, so now we've read that, we'll look at the scripture uh, that we're going to use in Romans 8, starting in verse 31. Um, Romans 8.31 What then shall we say to th these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is he who condemns. It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God. Who also makes intercession for us. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecutions, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, we are more, more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, life, angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, height, depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the key word in the midst of all that is love, which is living in obedience to the victory manual. If you live in obedience to Jesus... I mean, you're in the virtually untouchable realm. You have super supreme stability of the triple S, hey? Super supreme. Not just supreme, but super supreme. Supernatural supreme stability. But as I initially said, we've got to believe. Then we can receive. See? And if you doubt, you go without. Can't afford the, we can't afford that uh, luxury of doubting. We can't think, as the Jews of old thought, I can behave like a rebel and do what I want and have God's blessing. The scriptures. They don't say that. You know, the Lord, all through the Old Testament, handed his own people over to all kinds of calamity. Hey? Because they weren't doing what he says. So we have that assurance. See? We have that blessed assurance that Jesus is ours when we're running that six billion point check. You know, like you run it, oh, we've done a 32-point check on your car, you know, everything's fine. Everything's fine. And you drive down the road and it, it breaks down. Because their checklist, you know, they didn't even, they just ticked it all and they never checked it. And we can be in that position, you know, with our um, Christos checklist. And, and we're ticking it all off. Oh, yeah, I'm this, I'm that. Yeah, I love Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And you're not doing what he said. Did like you say you love Jesus? Oh, really? That is the, the uh, infallible uh, test. It's the, the love litmus test. Infallible. If you love me, you keep my command. That's what he said. By this we know that you, you love him. That we do what he says. And then we're overwhelmed. We're overwhelmed. We're taken down with his love. There's so much oozing out of that track, out of that road. Uh, called obedience, which is the narrow road. The wide road is the, the road of rebellion. Don't tell me, I know it all. And know all, know it, know all, know nothing. You know, and they just keep whipping themselves, and the fool repeats their folly. Just keep going over the same old ground. And they wonder why they're miserable. They wonder why 2023 is a year of misery for them. Because they're not believing. When you believe, you receive. 
not just power, but overcoming power. Right? To become more than an overcomer, as the scriptures say. Right? <coughs> as we have here in Romans 8. Okay? Romans 8. And the verse is... Uh, We'll go to 37. Yet in all things we are more, more than conquerors through him who loved us. See? He who loved us first so that we could love him second, love him back. More, more than conquerors. And I like the way Paul sits it in the middle, through him. It's always the heart of the issue is through him. Through doing what he says. <laughs> through doing what he says. Well, there's the great gap, isn't there? Between the narrow road to do what he says and the wide road who don't do what he says. Right? There's a great gap. But yet they're trying to bring it together. They're trying to close the gap. And they're trying to uh, smudge it all. And say, you know, we're all one. Because that's the expectation of the one world government and the one world church. That we all be one. There, there's no disagreeing. We're all the same. We're all sinners. And we're not changed. We're still the same old creature. Same old sinner. And only Jesus can uh, live a holy life. No one else can do it. Maybe Mary too. Yeah, Mary. And maybe the old tongue kisser, uh, De Dalai Lama, you know. He's a holy one too. And the Pope. He's another one there. And God knows what's going on in, in the dungeons of the Vatican. It's the truth. I'd hate to think. Right? But you see that power of, of, of that love. It gives you a list. It gives you a list. Of the love of God for us and our love for him combined. Look at the list. Right? Get a load of it. I am persuaded that death, life, angels, he's talking about fallen angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, height, depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us. Hey? Nothing can, nothing. When, when you love the Lord and you obey the Lord and He's loving you and you're loving Him. It, and it just creates this power that just cherry lafrongs us into the uh, powerhouse of grace. Into the Romans 5 1 to 5 zone where the love of God is just poured, it's just poured out into our hearts. Right? We're not disappointed, we're not down, we're not hum har, maybe could be, I don't know, we're not biting our nails and saying, Oh, what if? And, Oh, you know. No. You count not your life dear to you. It's when you count your life so dear to you. say, Oh, my life and me and what am I going to do? And, oh, my, my. They're the people that worry. They're the people that got big problems. Because it's all about them. They didn't do what Jesus said and... Uh, 
Matthew 10 and 34 and 39. So they reap of that, see? And that's what they reap, all the worry and the troubles because they're trying to live two lives. You can't be a, a dual mule. You're going to be a mule for the world or a mule for Jesus. Hey? And so uh, there's this great gap between this truth and, and, and the error. And that you can live uh, the way you want and you don't have to uh, abide uh, in the vine. Okay? But if we don't abide in the vine, how in the world are we going to bear the characteristic fruits of Christ? It's not going to happen. I like what it says in 39 in Romans 8, nor height, nor, nor depth, nor created thing can separate us. <laughs> Nothing can separate us. Sin can. Sin can separate us. Esau's sin separated him, didn't he? Because he favoured the soup. And I still can't get my head around that story of Esau and Jesus, you know, and, and God, where he preferred the bowl of soup to his birthright. I mean, that would be sort of like if you had a, a, a Ferrari or, or, or a one of, a, a great car, famous, worth millions and millions and millions, sitting there, and then on the table you had a little plastic car. And you say, you choose which one you want. You want the matchbox toy, or do you want the, the car that's worth uh, 45,000 billion trillion dollars? He said, oh, I'll take the Batchbox car. Uh, well, that's what Esau did. He took the Matchbox car. <laughs> he just didn't think it through. But in his pride and high-mindedness and arrogance, I think he was a Jew, wasn't he? Not sure. I'll come back. God will forgive me. Isn't that what they say? God will forgive me. He understands. <laughs> God understands. No. He doesn't understand things your way. He understands things his way. <laughs> he does things his way. And he calls the shots. And I also have a liking... Uh, to verse 34 in Romans 8. We, we were just dealing then with one saved, always saved in this message about the gap and the difference between the narrow road and the wide road and the promises we make and don't keep. Uh, he'll be number one, not the unknown son. <laughs> and... Now we're going into uh, modalism and oneness in verse 34, Romans 8. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of himself. No, no, no one can sit at the right hand of themselves. <laughs> Unless you have a twin joined at the hip <laughs> and that even that wouldn't cut a, uh, line up would it see they see the oneness in the, the Falau family Jesus is Jesus Jesus is God and Jesus is the Holy Spirit no Jesus is Jesus Father is Father Holy Ghost is Holy Ghost the paraclete the helper three Identities, three people, one God, and everyone said. Amen. Amen. 
and Jesus and Father are one, but they are two. Even as I am one with Jesus, but we are two. And everyone said Amen again. Amen. I didn't hear that time. Amen. Oh, hallelujah! hallelujah. Oh, Seated and even risen, uh, uh, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. You talk about stability. Who you got interceding for you? Grandma. Who's interceding for you every day, every hour of the day? Oh, mummy. Is that who's interceding for you? Who's looking out for you? In other words, you're on his mind. You're always on my mind. You're always on my mind. No one in the world can have someone on their mind every second of the day and still get on with their job. Most people have themselves on their mind. But we have Jesus has us on his mind. Right? He's looking out for you. Are you looking out for him? What do you mean? Look, he doesn't need to be looked out for. Oh, he doesn't need to be loved back. It's a one-way street, isn't it? We need to look out for Jesus and what he wants what do you want Lord not my will Jesus said that not some uh, human a mere sinful human Jesus said your will Father not mine see and here we have a stability unprecedented in Romans 8, 34. Who is he who condemned? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. How much equipment do we need to paint a wall? Well... You'd need some, probably, paint, a brush and thinners and a roller. Be about it. Well, we see all the equipment that God gives us, all the blessings that God... And we complain. We're complaining. It's too hard. I'm going back. John chapter 6. 66 or 60 to 72 even. I'm going back. This is too hard. This is too much of an ask. Right? What do you reckon about that? You know, no matter what the Lord says, we need to understand it's peanut compared to what he's done and doing for us. But too many proud, arrogant, selfish, greedy people who count their life so dear to themselves. They're not prepared to cast their bread upon the water. Right? And therefore it will not return. They will die forever in the second death, tormented in hell. John 6. <coughs> Gospel of Christ according to John chapter 6, verse 60. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? Verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus, 
said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You see that? That's what Pedro said. He didn't say that you are the Christ, that you are the Christ, the only God. No, the Son of the living God. Come on. Hey? But you see, it got a bit hard. Got a bit hard. And they bailed out. And they were disciples. Doesn't it say that in 66? Many disciples. What? Oh no, they didn't really know Jesus, you know what I mean? They sort of want like, you know, as the Baptist church would say. Not John the Baptist. Well, you know. No, it says disciples. They were under the disciplining hand of Jesus. And the same with congregations. They're under the disciplining hand of the word who is Jesus. And they say, this is not on. I don't want to come to this church anymore. It's too hard. You've set the bar too high. No, no. Jesus' standard is death. That's his standard. None of this bar bit. That's world talk. Oh, you set the bar too high. No, death. Death. To self. That's salvation. <laughs> That's not what I said. That's not my rules. I'm talking Jesus here. I'm not talking tongue kissing Dalai Lama. I'm not talking pedo popes or pedo priests or bishops. I'm not talking that garbage. Softly, softly. Attempts pulling myself up with my shoelaces. Oh, you know, doesn't work. Glory to the Lamb. Matthew 10 34. Do not think I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but my word, the sword. Matthew 10, 35. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those of his own house. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He don't want to know. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. And he who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Not just loses their life. Many men lose their life. Many women lose their life through drugs and stupidity and anger. It's talking about for him. He who loses his life for my sake. Everything's been for his sake in my walk in the last 36 years. It's for his sake. I've suffered great loss and heartache and pain for his sake. If I was sitting in the pub smoking durries and taking drugs, I'd have none of that. I would have never been set on fire, food poisoned, beaten, spat on, kicked, laughed at, mocked and insulted for the last 36 years. 
It's all been for His sake. I was on the job. Can someone say amen? amen. Hallelujah! I was on the job. I wasn't in the pub drunk brawling. On the job. Copping the flack. I know. I have no life in this life. He who finds his life. They don't want to give up their life. They're going to lose it. For eternity. So we see the gap, don't we? We see the difference. And we see the stability we have, eternal life. Through Christ Jesus, who has a Father. Amen? Amen. Who has a Father. Look at this for stability. Romans 8 and the verse is 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who? Or who would be stupid enough to go against a bona fide man of God? Who would be that dumb? <laughs> I, when I read that, I think of my Muslim attacker who attacked me for no reason whatsoever. In the street. I didn't even know the man. And he had a heart attack. Not me. He had a heart attack. And the ambulance had to come and put oxygen tank on him in the street. And you see him there on the video with him with the oxygen, oxygen mask on. Saying, he burned my heart. He burned my heart with his word. He burned my heart. Oh, he profited me. No, he Jeremiah twenty three twenty nine to me. Is not my word a fire and a hammer? Jeremiah twenty three twenty nine. Confirmation. You see, when God confirms something, he just doesn't do it ordinarily. He'll get a prophet's enemy to confirm his call. Not someone that likes him. Oh, I like him, Billy the prophet, you know. Oh, he's so good. Oh, he's a prophet, all right. No, he'll take an enemy which is contrary. An enemy who says, he burned my heart with his words. Well, I must have been speaking the true word of God. Hey? And that is not found in Psalm 23. It's found in the writings of the prophet Jeremiah. Everyone said amen. amen. You see, God's love. Mix. See, God's love, the beauty and the, the power. That's the power of love. And in that uh, video that the University of Southern Queensland done on me, there's a song at the end that I never chose, and it's about the power of love. That's the power of love. They finished off. I didn't tell them to put that there. They put that there by the hand of God. <laughs> They done the, the mini doc on me by the hand of God. I didn't pay for that. I don't pay for anything. True ambassadors don't pay. It's all provided. Amen? Amen. I don't have to save up and struggle and to go somewhere and preach. The Lord, he provides because he's the guide. Simple as that. So, <laughs> that Muslim made it very clear that the words of God 
not man's words, not my words, not insults from a, an, an angry human, but the word of God was being spoken that day. That's the love of God. God's love, when, when we touch on God's love, there is a fellowship going on. With the person and God. And that person has opened the door. God's allowed them to come in to his agape love because they do what he says. Okay. And we read that in John. Can we go there please? We read that in John. Those who don't do what he said, they'll never know that agape love. They'll never know how beautiful and how powerful, powerful and beautiful. John 14. They'll never know it. They'll never taste it. Even when we first come to the Lord, we do what he says and then the joy bells start ringing. Floods of joy, O oh my soul, like the sea, billows roll, when Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy. Agape love. Joy unspeakable. No words to match. Peace beyond my understanding. Not in some little cottage on a hill in Sweden, in the, in, up in the hillside with the lovely tulips or, from Amsterdam or whatever. That, that doesn't even scratch the sides of agape love. Because that stuff is around you and agape love is in you. You see that? No man can be in you. No woman can be in you. In your innermost being. No one. Only God. So, we go to John chapter 14. Let's go there. See what we got there. And we'll start reading in verse... 15. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 15. John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my command. <laughs> uh, I like that. And I will pray to Father, and he will give you another helper, <clears throat> that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Because it never, or should I say, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. At that day you will know that I am in my Father, you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him. And manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? 
Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. Did you see that? Did you see what it said there in verse 23? If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. He said that directly after the question. In 22. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him. This is what was said. Lord... How is it that you will manifest yourself to us, but not to the world? And then he told him why. Because they don't do what he says. You see that? These are the disciples he's talking to. Because they don't do what he said. Therefore, they got no idea what it's like. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like to love my Saviour, to love my Saviour the way he loves me. Na, 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 na. You don't know what it's like. Oh, you don't know. They got no idea. They don't have it. But you can get any Freddy in the world Anyone that wants to obey Jesus and they'll taste and see the Lord is good. They will partake of his holiness. A sphere that's unspeakable. A realm that is so redeeming and set freeing. All because... You just do that one thing. And that's how we started the relationship. By obedience. Repent. Repent. Believe. Then repent. Then receive. Then continue. To the end. And everything will be. It's it's just a whole new way of living. New life divine. Nothing that the world can offer. No matter what the world offers, it still falls short of what God has for us in not just the stability stokes, but everything in life. Falls short of loving Jesus. See? That's when they Ask the question, how come you don't manifest yourself to the world? And Jesus basically said, because they don't love me. Because that's all, John 14, uh, 15 to, uh, well, it's 24, talking about his love. And Father loving you. And I can spend my whole day through just loving him, my saviour. But people don't understand that living in obedience to the victor, Emmanuel, they don't grasp, they can't comprehend. The light shining, see? But they cannot understand. Because they're sin blocking. Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts and chapter 1, please. Yeah. Acts chapter 1. Hallelujah. And then go to Acts chapter 1. 
and we'll just zip over to verse 8, which says, Acts 1, 8, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all through the earth, to the end of the earth. And I read that because of Psalm 23 and the tail end of verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And then it says, you anoint. See that? You anoint my head with power. Right? You anoint my head with power. That's what's going on in tail end of Psalm 23.5 and comparison, uh, comparing it with Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power. See, when you talk about the Holy Spirit, it's about power. And David was talking about the anointing. He's talking about the power of God. He knew about the anointing. He knew the anointed one, Jesus. And so no greater stability can we have than the power of God upon us. Think about it. I mean, you might go to a gym or you might do martial arts or long distance running and power sports or something but that's just peanuts compared to the power of the Holy Ghost <laughs> when you see what the men of God went through of old because they had the power of God on them we see what Jesus went through uh, and he had the power of God on him descending from above like, like into a dove. Power of God's upon you. I tell you what, you're not holding all these grudges and walking around with unforgiveness and misery and fear and doubt and hatred. That just doesn't exist. That just, it just falls off you as you walk on with the Lord loving him. Loving the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul and strength and mind. That, all that other stuff, when you love the Lord, when you keep the covenant, when you do what the Lord says, that's keeping the covenant, the agreement that he would be number one. Nothing else and no one else. He's number one, priority. When it comes to the crunch... I've had to do things uh, that I didn't like. That my old man didn't like. That my way w was not uh, agreeable to. But I had, you have to put the Lord first. Right? That's why the Lord says and briefs his disciples and says, Look, no one has left house or wife, or lands, or possessions, or children, or anything. For my name's sake, and not received a hundredfold in this life, and eternal life in the next. He's letting them know, your reward is far above. A hundredfold more than a child, than your own child. He going provide you a hundredfold more than your wife. Hundredfold. Hundred times better. Hundred times better than your children. Hundred times better than your land and possession. Hundred times better. And throws in his eternal life <laughs> in heaven. Oh, the Lord wouldn't want me to do that for his name, you know, for him. 
his family first. Garbage. Bulldust. Jesus ain't family first. Jesus is Jesus first. <laughs> we just read it in John 14. Right? We just read it in Matthew 10, 34 to 39. Now it's this love, see? This love for Jesus. That's the judgment. Do you love him? That's what it's going to come down to. Do you love him first and foremost? Or is he somewhere on your grocery list? Hey? You might be able to get cheaper chips. Or... If you mention his name at the counter, you get a bigger cabbage. You know, Jesus, the concession card. No, 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 no. There's nothing as beautiful as he. Hey? Oh, when I think of you, my Lord, I think of all the trees. The long, the short, the fat, the thin, the shrubs and all the twigs everything you've given us is all so beautiful but there's not one thing I can see as beautiful as thee Jesus beautiful Prince of Peace my mighty one Jesus Beautiful, oh, Prince of Peace, my mighty one. The rainbow comes on a rainy day to say he'll flood no more. And he gives us his commandments that we may walk strong and tall. But there's one thing that he requires, that we open up our heart, that he may come and fill us with his joy and peace and love. Jesus, beautiful, Prince of Peace, my mighty one. Jesus, beautiful, Prince of Peace, my mighty one. Right? So, Acts 1 and the verse ends. I, but you shall receive, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. And that's what we're witnessing, aren't we? We're witnessing daily, or should be witnessing daily, the power of God's salvation, power of his love. That's the power of love. Nothing's too much. No ask is too much. To give up anything or anyone, it's never too much. When you love Jesus, because love makes light work. There's no struggle. Oh, I'm struggling with this. No, <coughs> the reality is you don't want to do it. That's when the, when the struggle comes in. You know, you've got the, the yard there and you don't want to mow the yard. And then it's going to be a struggle. But if, if you just knuckle down and, and, and do it, right? you've got to love to do it. Get it nice looking. Get it looking nice and tidy. Get that floor nice and vacuumed and mop out. Get your disinfectant and everything. Make it smell nice. Because you're loving it. You're cooking that meal. It's a goat that made it with a love. You know? You know what I mean? It could be the simplest thing. It'd just be a piece of salmon, but it's a made of with a love, you know. And it's nothing fancy. It's just got a bit of salt and pepper and a bit of curry powder and turmeric. That's all it is. And it's just baked at the right time. It's taken out. And you've got to time it when you take it out because you're going to rest it. So it's going to keep cooking. So you better make sure you take it out a little bit early. And give a bit of a squeeze of the lime or lemon, whatever you favour. 
See? And you're loving it. And then when someone eats it, they go, Oh, oh, man, what? How awesome is that? <laughs> yeah? Yeah, of course they do. You know, whatever it is, if you love doing it, it's easy. Hey? You know, if you're married to someone and they start to get nasty or something, it's easy because you love them. You know, you think, oh, yeah. And they can just throw darts at you all day. And you say, oh, oh. You change the colours. You know, you usually throw red ones. No. It doesn't matter. It just rolls off because love makes things easy. But if there's no love there, it makes things very difficult. Very, very difficult. <laughs> and that's the same with Jesus. If we don't love him, we'll eventually drift away. Or someone will have our, let our guard down and someone will steal our crown. And God allows people to steal your crown if you love them more. Huh? Oh, drifting away from me and it's breaking me in two. Watching you going to hell. Hey? Huh? The Lord allows that. If you're not faithful to him, he allows all sorts of things, doesn't he? Hey? We've got to be faithful. And then the Lord will bless us as we got here. When the power... See, you, you anoint my head with power, with oil, with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Acts 1.8. And the power... When you receive the power, you receive the anointing from the anointed one, the power. And then it says, your cup will run over. You'll have so much power, so much power upon you. Well, I remember when I came first to the Lord and all I did was said a simple prayer, like a moron would think, how's that going to Sherry Lafron you into heaven. How's that going to catapult you into God's sphere? One prayer, a simple little prayer like that. See, their pride and arrogance won't allow them to grasp it. I just said one prayer and this power that came upon me, I was just like, oh man. Yeah. You know? I shot the sheriff. I didn't shoot the deputy. Woo. I didn't know which way to go. You know, I was just so blown out. It was the love, see? That love of God in the anointing just saturated, soaked me in his love. That's why I'm such a love thing, you know? I can't help it. I'm just a lovely thing. You know, go, you lovely thing. And you, I love treating my life uh, cheap. I don't treat my life dear to me. As Paul said, don't treat your life dear to you. You're robbing yourself. You're robbing yourself. If it's all about me and oh, I, I'm going to live more, I want to live longer and I want to, I want to, and I want to, you know, and I, 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 Captain. Just forget about yourself, concentrate on him and worship him. And we know the greatest form of worship is obedience. RE forward slash Abraham, stay here. Me and the boy are going over yonder. And we're going to worship the Lord. I mean, I'm going to kill my son. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just said that. You know, Abraham says, oh, well, I just said that to you. We're going over to worship the Lord. Because if I said, I'm going over there to kill my son, you should all be banging on. Oh, don't do that, Abraham. Oh, you know, we're family first. That's why he told the family first to stay there. He said, don't follow me, you, un you unbelievers, you, you doubters, you family first mob, because I'm going to kill this boy. Because God wants me to. Because he told me to. To see how much I love him. Even though he knows how much. Hey, what do you think of that? And then he said, nah. Yeah, nah, I'll let you off. 
There's a ram in the thicket. And Abraham went, And then Isaac said, Oh, Dad. Hang on, what did he say? <laughs> Isaac said, uh, um, I can't remember. But I will think of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just can't remember. I was going to say something then in humour. <sighs> but there it was, that obedience. The love, so his love for God. And God was quite impressed. You know, now I know you love me. See? Now I know. <laughs> now I know you love me. So, look. I think we'll move on with verse 6 next week. Uh, we didn't quite get there, did we? we? We were sort of getting the overflow of 5 today. So that might be a... Um, instead of calling it 6, it could might call it 5B. I don't know. But something will work out. And the main thing is it's done and we all got blessed and we can just still go over that. And when we want another, uh, we're getting a bit low on the joy, we have another drink and just play it again, you know. Yeah. What's that drink in, in New Zealand that they drink? Say again? That's what Isaac said. Oh, Dad, go easy on the LMP. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, LMP. LN, yeah, LMP. So excited. It, he, they were excited, and I'm excited to read that. Uh, he was prepared to go all the way. See? He wasn't counting uh, his life, dear, or his son's. And, and to think that that son, Isaac, uh, was the one he really loved, you know. He, he was waiting. Abraham was waiting for Isaac to have that boy. But the first boy, uh, Ishmael, he was to the mistress. Um, and he wasn't the promised. So the promise is in the promised one. And that's the lineage we're born of when we're born again. We're born of the promise. All those great heavenly promises. And we're still in promises, aren't we? We're in the S. We're in the stability. The stability of the promises. Of the promised lineage. Lineage. Dear me. <laughs> uh, well, it take the first to weaken the abyss to confound the wine. We're just led along by the Spirit. Just travelling along by the Spirit. I'm just a walking along on moonlight bay. Just travelling along on moonlight bay. I think I'll leave it there. Thank you, Jesus.